1 Samuel 19, beginning at verse 1 through to the end of verse 8. Saul told his son Jonathan and all the attendants to kill David. But Jonathan had taken a great liking to David and warned him, My father Saul is looking for a chance to kill you. Be on your guard tomorrow morning. Go into hiding and stay there. I will go out and stand with my father in the field where you are. I'll speak to him about you and will tell you what I find out. Jonathan spoke well of David to Saul, his father, and said to him, Let not the king do wrong to his servant David. He has not wronged you. And what has he had done has benefited you greatly. He took his life in his hands when he killed the Philistine. The Lord won a great victory for all Israel, and you saw it and were glad. Why then would you do wrong to an innocent man like David by killing him for no reason? Saul listened to Jonathan and took this oath. As surely as the Lord lives, David will not be put to death. So Jonathan called David and told him the whole conversation. He brought him to Saul, and David was with Saul as before. Welcome to this passage from 1 Samuel 19. As you've heard that reading, it probably has dawned upon you that there's been a change in the text here, and the change is reflective of sadly of Saul's desire now to move from secret and surreptitious desires to kill David to have it out in the open. The truth that probably everybody knew within the kingdom was that Saul was jealous of David, he's now been let out of the bag, he's not trying to get David killed by the hands of the Philistines, he actually wants somebody in his old household, his own family, his own kingdom to do the job itself. And it begins with that in verse 1. Saul told his son Jonathan and all the attendants to kill David. In other words, loyalty to Saul is paramount. Now, Saul would have known, of course, how much David was loved, how much Jonathan loved uh, David as bond brothers. But he's saying to his family, he's saying to his kingdom, I am the king, this man will not be the king. Loyalty to me is paramount. And so he's drawn a line in the sand here, Saul. And he says, basically, I am the boss. And what we have from 1 Samuel 19 onwards is the reality that Saul is really pitting himself against God. He's pitting himself against God's people, God's ways, God's character. We know that the Lord had left him. And therefore, Saul is trying, sadly, like a lot of us, to run our own life, our own way, with our own desires, in order to fulfill our own promises. It's just that Saul was the king and therefore had a lot more ability to do that. One difference between the ancient world and the modern world, especially within Australia, is the desire in many countries throughout the history of the world to appoint military leaders as the next king, or in our case, prime minister or United States president. I'm pretty sure that until Bill Clinton I mean, that's four presidents ago within the United States. There had been a long history of military leaders being president. It's one of those things that you don't quite realise. Uh, Kennedy, Johnson, Nixon, Bush, and famously, of course, Washington and Lincoln and many people, uh, Eisenhower after World War II. A lot of countries appoint leaders as from their military ranks. Australia is rarely one of those countries, uh, Gorton being one of the only military uh, people, but we don't appoint military leaders, so we don't quite see how the logic works that it does work in a vast majority of the world, and still does, where those who afford, are afforded military rank, those who are demonstrated of heroism within battles, are generally seen as not just military leaders, but leaders of the country. And so David is being seen as that by the populace because Saul has forfeited his right willingly to be the leader of the nation and also the leader of God's people and the leader of the military. All three of those in Israel go together. Saul has forfeited that right, but like a person or a dictator hanging on for grim life as the forces approach, this is what Saul is doing. And so he comes up now with a plan the plan now is not a cunning plan, it's out in the open. We've got to kill this guy. And this is where Jonathan performs the role of mediator, and he does that a couple of times. Now we know in the scriptures the Lord Jesus is our brilliant, our awesome, the loving mediator between us and God. 
by mediating between us and God, he removes our sin, takes it upon himself. Jonathan takes upon himself the task of persuading his father that David is not a sinful man. He is loyal to the king. He is a person who God is working through. And you can't miss the irony here. The sad reality is that Saul is the opposite of all those. Saul is not exhibiting God's character. Saul is being sinful and Saul is losing the kingship. And the reality is Jonathan knows it, but yet he still stands up for what is right. He is loyal to God, loyal to his friend and stands up for the truth. That is what a mediator does. A mediator doesn't bow to one side based upon sinfulness, based upon desire, but he continues to uphold truth according to the reality that God has given Jonathan. Jonathan knows David's character. Jonathan knows God's character. And therefore he knows that his father's desire to kill Saul is altogether wrong. You can see that logic in verses 4 through 5. And Saul listens. We don't know how much he was convinced. We know that doesn't last long. But certainly he was convinced by the logic and the care and the reality and the truthfulness of his son. And this can happen. That is, sometimes enemies of God will be convinced by the truth. And that is our task as people who are mediators of God's word. We aren't mediators in the sense that we stand in place. We are mediators in the sense that we are ambassadors for the real mediator, Jesus Christ. We don't mediate the truth, of course. We give the truth. Our mediatorial role is in the sense of handing over, giving, preaching, and instructing. And we point to somebody else. Like Jonathan pointed to the reality of David's character, we point to the reality of Jesus' character. And he mediates all humanity between them and God. Saul listens. Sometimes your friends will listen. Our task, be loyal to God, stand up for the truth, even when it might be hard. Amen.